Hi guys, I'm a history teller guy, and today episode it's about very young German soldier resisting an entire regiment of Red Army's tanks. Let me introduce you, Fritz Christen. He was born on 29 of June 1941 in the German province of Bavaria. His parents were ordinary Germans. Fritz was born in an area when the entire Germany was under the terrible effect of the defeat, the First World War and the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. The economic crisis was further worsened by the inefficiency of the Weimar regime. Later, Adolf Hitler came to power and the economic condition of Germany improved. Fritz's parents became supporters of the Hitler and the National Socialist Party. Fritz soon joined the Hitler Jugend which thrilled its member with core virtues of honor, courage, order and sacrifice. He firmly believed in the ideology of the National Socialist Party. In 1940, Fritz joined the German army and volunteered for the waffen -SS. He got selected. The waffen -SS was the military branch of the Nazi Party SS organization. Its formation included men from Nazi Germany, along with volunteers and country from both occupied and unoccupied lands. The waffen -SS grew from three regiments to over 38 divisions during the World War II and served along the here the regular army and the unified police and other security units. It was under the control Reichsführer SS Himmler. With the start of the Second World War, tactical control was exercised by a high command of the armed force, with some units was being subordinated to the commando staff Reifuhrer SS, directly under Himmler's control. Initially, in keeping with the racial policy of the Nazi Germany, membership was open only to people of Germanic origin, so-called Aryan. The rules were partially relaxed in 1940 and after Operation Barbarossa in June 1941. The Nazi propaganda claimed that the war was a European crusade against the Bolshevism and subsequently units consisting largely or solely of foreign volunteers and conscripts were also raised. The Waffen SS units were made of men mainly from among the nationals of Nazi-occupied Europe. Despite of the relaxation of the rules, the Waffen SS still based on the racist ideology of Nazism and ethnic Poles who were viewed as subhumans were specially paired from the formations. Members of the waffen -SS were involved in numerous atrocities. At the post-war Nuremberg trial, the waffen -SS was judged to be a criminal organization due with connection to the Nazi party and direct involvement in numerous war crimes and crimes against humanity. At the time, Field Marshal Guderian started Operation Barbarossa and Germany invaded the Soviet Union. Hitler hoped to repeat the success of the Blitzkrieg in Western Europe and win a quick victory over the massive nation he viewed as Germany's sworn enemy. On June 22, 1941, more than 3 million German and Axis troops invaded the Soviet Union along a 1,800 mile long front. It was Germany's largest invasion force of the war, representing some 80% of the Wehrmacht, the German armed forces, and one of the most powerful invasion forces in the history. Despite the repeated warnings, Stalin refused to believe that Hitler was planning an attack, and German invasion caught the Red Army unprepared, with a three-pronged attack towards Leningrad in the north, Moscow in the center, and Ukraine in the south. German Panzer divisions and Luftwaffe helped the German gain an early advantage against the numerous but poorly trained Soviet troops. On the first day of the attack, the Luftwaffe managed to shoot down more than a thousand Soviet aircraft. German forces initially moved quickly along the vast front, taking millions of Soviet soldiers as a prisoners. The Einsatzgruppe or armed SS death squad followed in the army's wake, seeking out and killing many civilians, especially Soviet Jews. Hitler decided directives for the invasion included the Commissar Order, which authorized to immediate execution all of the captured enemy officers. Many Soviet prisoners of the war were also killed immediately upon the capture, another practice that violated the international war protocol. 
Fritz Christian was serving in the anti-tank battalion of the SS division of Tottenkov. Tottenkov was ferocious in Russia, Christian celebrating his 20th birthday in the early days of the invasion. German army was tearing apart the Red Army and the morale of the Tottenkov was very high. The German generals were more concerned about the winter than the Red Army. On 24 September 1941, Fritz battalion reached the outskirts of the village of Lushno. They dug the trenches, found covers and waited for the next day. With their dawn, Soviet tanks appeared in the village, followed by infantrymen. The German gunners fought fiercely, disabling several tanks and inflicting significant casualties on the Red Army. The cover and trenches were not fully effective. Soviet tanks continued firing. German soldiers went down fighting. Eventually, after losing several tanks and many soldiers, the Soviets pulled back to regroup. Christian was temporarily relieved and tried to find his comrades. He received no answer. The entire German gun battalion, except Fritz, was dead or dying. Thereafter, the entire anti tank gun position north of village Lushno was being manned by a single 20 years old soldier with a single intact anti-tank gun without a working sight. The Soviet force consisted of the remains of the tank regiment and the regular infantry battalion. The regroup Red Army returned in the evening. Christian opened fire with his anti-tank gun and a collection of small arms gathered from his dead comrades. He moved from position to position to create the illusion of the numbers. At the night he scavenged for food, water and ammunition and skirmish isolated Soviet groups. During the daytime, he held off an enemy attack with his anti-tank guns and small arm fire. He even partially dismantled his very heavy anti-tank gun, somehow took it to a new firing position, got it supported against a log and kept on firing. By the morning of 27 September 1941, he was left with no ammunition. He hadn't slept, had not eaten or taken any water. He remained to man his position with only a pistol. The morning came. There was no attack from the enemy, but soldiers came. German reformers ultimately reached Lushno. German soldiers were shocked beyond belief. Fritz was taken from the battlefield by the German soldiers. Theodor Eike, the commander of the Tottenkov division, personally awarded Fritz with the Iron Cross first class and recommended him for the Nycross. In Germany, Fritz was personally presented by the Nycross by Adolf Hitler. He was the first enlisted man in the Tottenkopf and the youngest Waffenesser soldier to acquire the Nycross. After the celebration, he went to see his family. He spent a couple of days there. Wherever your journey in life may take you, we pray you will always be safe. Enjoy the ride and never forget your way back home. We always here for you. After visiting his family, he came back to the battlefield of Russia. In May 1945, severely dismissed Tottenkov division surrendered to the American force in Czechoslovakia. The Americans handed over the Germans to the Red Army. While in custody of the Russians, the Tottenkov soldier received very harsh treatment due to alleged war crimes on the Russian soil. Many German soldiers died in captivity, but Fritz Christian survived 10 years of brutal punishment and returned to Germany in 1955. The great soldier spent his last days with his wife Maria, his hometown in Bavaria. He died on 23rd of September. 1995. Although I don't support the ideology for which Fritz Christian fought, let us pay our respect to the gallantry and courage of this great soldier. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, please subscribe or leave a like or leave a comment and see you in the next one.